my god we're gonna do it how good is Diablo 4 I want you guys to put some respect on this man's name on a fateful day literally 10 fucking years ago Kriparian the night before the patch came out to nerf Inferno mode Kriparian went and killed Diablo on Hardcore Inferno with Krippy, his friend. And they were the only two people in the world to ever accomplish this. And nobody was ever able to beat it because it was nerfed the next morning. This is the guy who we're going to be listening to what he's got to say. Hey guys, how's it going? Kripari in here. Today I want to talk to you about Diablo 4 what I have learned, and I want to make this video to give you a bit of history of me with the Diablo genre, mm -hmm. what you can expect out of Diablo 4, my experience, and before all of that, I want to give you guys a bit of history. So, I love the Diablo genre. I actually quit my job and yeah. became a streamer, full-time YouTuber mm -hmm. as a result of Diablo 3 coming mm -hmm. out. I remember. A bit more on that later. However, over the years... He and played it the beta so much, and then, like, Athene goes into a, a, a fucking voice call on Skype with Kriparian, and Athene's trying to fucking slap his dick around, right? Uh, you know, talk about how good he's going to be at Diablo 4 and how, how good he's going to be. Bro, Kriparian did not even take him seriously. He didn't even acknowledge the fact. And then Kriparian went on to just completely blow him out of the fucking water. It has been 11 years since I remember since that I've done call. This now. I was Thank there. Thank you for supporting the channel and well, the stream and all that in that time. Um, you know, we've evolved, remember we've that? done yeah. many different games, and at this point, you know, I generally play Hearthstone. Uh, now, there is some chance that I will play a lot of Diablo 4 when it releases, but I'm making this video uh, just as my opinion. Um, I Kriparian was also the guy that put PoE on the map. He, like, I, for anybody who played PoE back in the day, you probably heard about it through the grapevine through Kriparian. That's how I did. I have a video of myself talking about the Path of Exile closed beta, and I even acknowledge that I learned about it from Kriparian. And it's from like 2012, 2013. I I'll have to put, put it up on YouTube somewhere. I think I can make this impartially unbiased. Um, sure, there are some people that have been very nice to me on the Diablo community uh -oh. teams uh -oh. and all that but it's not like a sponsored video or anything yeah, yeah, um yeah. you know i i probably won't play diablo 4 full time and i'm generally not too reserved to call stuff out as i see it despite what bridges that might burn it is what it is so keep that in mind as you see this video now uh i just want to give you guys uh -oh. a quick history <laughs> of me playing diablo games and i'll tell you quickly what i think about um, uh, Diablo 4. What it is. And then I'll give you guys the full rundown. It's going to be a long video. I do these videos one take. Every video on this channel is done in one try in the intro. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, and there's no like... Where do you think I got the way I did my videos? Because the reason why I did them in one take is I didn't want to edit. Second take, trust me. Yeah, I, I never. Uh, but I do it. have a few notes in this in this one particular video because there's just so many topics to cover. I only wanted to make this video if I felt comfortable that I understood the game well enough, and I'm making this video after having played uh, about 40 hours of the three and a half ish weekend more. that we had to play yeah. the barbarian, the sorcerer and the rogue class in the first open early access beta i don't know what they're calling it whatever yeah 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 so i do feel confident that i understand the game as i played it now that might not be the game as it is currently in development That's what true. we're playing might not be that recent to where they have developed the game in terms of actually releasing it two and a half months from now but it's all we got, so my opinion is based on that. Yeah, of course. I played Diablo 1 when it came out. It was a wonderful experience. It really blew me away about the depth and what a video game could be. And it was the first... I never had the opportunity to do that. 
Mom saw Diablo on the fucking cover. She's like, you really think I'm going to buy you a game? The devil's right on the cover of it. I'm not buying you a game. The devil's right on the cover. I don't want you playing that fucking shit. So I never played Diablo 1 or Diablo 2. Game I actually played online. I have to imagine it was one of the first games you could play online as a result, and it was a really good game to play online. Warcraft you could too, talk to so. other players, yeah, you could PvP them. It was a really mind blowing yeah. experience for me. In a way, yeah, that really did change my life in a really big way, and somehow I end up here, and you guys get to hear my opinions about Diablo and whatnot. Uh, I actually played Diablo 1 a lot, I played multiplayer a lot. I had the goal to get to max level, which was 50, and I was closing in on it, but I was, you know, a very young kid at the time, so I was telling people about how great I am online, and someone hacked my character and set it back to level 1. Hacks were very common in Diablo 1. I tried to do things legit just there to prove go. myself that I could, but, you know, uh, that's not what ended up happening, I guess. Oh, well. Because, you know, like, somebody he heard him talking shit about it, you know, in, like, middle school or some shit. They're like, you know what? I've had enough of this. I I'm sick of hearing this. I'm going to get on this kid's account, and I'm going to just fuck it up. I ended up getting Diablo 1 for PlayStation 1, and at times I would I play with my friends from one. middle school, and it was really a wonderful experience. Diablo 1, it's been decades since... And yet, it is a game that people can play today and still enjoy parts of it. It's really unbelievable what they came up. Diablo 1 really defined the genre of ARPGs. Maybe in I should my play opinion. that one day. Diablo 2 really perfected it. Diablo 2 has so many systems that were a slam dunk. The itemization of Diablo 2, the pacing creating complex characters simple to start but really difficult to master yeah my uh, i'm gonna play diablo 2 resurrected uh after the diablo 4 beta uh, i'm gonna play through it i've never actually played through the campaign i'm gonna play through the campaign just to say that i've done it pvp was actually possibly the best pvp in any arpg it defined how a game can approach Not hardcore hard mode in a fair way and so many of the early concepts of diablo 2 actually were taken when development of path of exile and in my opinion path of exile is kind of the game to beat in the arpg space right now anyways yeah. And Diablo 2 was really... In terms of, like, for ARPG enjoyers, like, serious ARPG players, absolutely, PoE is the game. It's the gold standard. An absolute masterpiece. Honestly, Diablo 2 was the game that Diablo 3 was being compared against, not because it was just one number higher. It was the one being compared against because when Diablo 3 came out over a decade after Diablo 2, Diablo 2 still at that point in time was the benchmark for ARPGs. Today, still, I think, yes. in my opinion, I think the benchmark is Path of Exile. So it is. it is a little bit of a different story. Diablo 3 came out, and Diablo 3, I feel, was one of the most ambitious projects Blizzard has ever taken on. It is a game that hyped me like no other. Oh, if you guys remember Jay Wilson huge. talking about how their developers, and no, their, their game testers, tried to barely beat the game on a certain difficulty, and, and then, then they, they doubled, doubled it. it. They yep. doubled the numbers of that difficulty, yep, and that's the difficulty that you could expect in Diablo 4. And, and you did, Diablo 3 means, yes, and it was true. Inferno was completely fucking overtuned. Uh, Diablo 3, I mean. And mm -hmm. coming from a World of Warcraft raider where balancing was actually pretty spot on in so many raids and somehow still is to this day, yeah. this was such a hype moment. This was so oh, exciting. Yeah. I know we meme about it. I know it's a very memeable moment, but as a, you know, as someone who had the goal of actually just taking on the game, knowing that there's a goal out there, knowing that there is an, a nearly impossible challenge ahead is a really exciting moment. Diablo 3 tried to change everything in significant ways. It tried to change mercenaries in different ways. It tried to change characters in, in very different ways. Everything scaled off of weapons. Everything multiplied everything. They tried to change that in a different way. They tried to revolutionize trading with the real money auction house. That was crazy. I remember whenever it came out, and people were like, dude, so you can make money playing a video game? Wait, what? You just spent $7? You know, Diablo 3 was an incredibly ambitious project. 
However, I think it released undercooked. Uh, a lot of the mechanics weren't fleshed out. A lot and it never got cooked, by the way. A lot of the mechanics were left out of the release of the game. Yeah, like PvP. And a lot of these crazy ambitious ideas where they try to rework and redo an ARPG as people play it, well, a lot of them just didn't really work out. It's hard to say they were bad ideas because at the time I was really, you know, it really piqued my interest. You know, this, yeah. this could be a really interesting thing, you know, a uh, real money auction house. I mean, I don't know if I really want to pay real money for, for items, but... I remember one time, I think Kriparian sold, like, a blue item on the real money auction house for, like, $200 and somebody bought it. <laughs> People, like, on the first week at the real money auction house, they were spending all kinds of, like, fucking stupid amounts of money on, like, random shit. You know, it's never been done before. I want to see what it's going to come to. Yeah. So Diablo 3 was a really ambitious project. Um... Almost everything they did uh, didn't work out better than Diablo 2, in my the, opinion. The and one of the worst on. things in Diablo 3 was the item scaling, where everything multiplied everything. Your weapon damage yep. had like a crazy multiplier, and you had crazy multipliers from crit damage, skill damage. And now we have sets that have like 60,000% increased damage to certain skills. Yeah, it's not the best set. You know, it's, if you have itemization at that level and you're doing literally quintillion damage, you're going to have problems. And Diablo 3 has always struggled to deal with those problems. because Well, it, it had those problems even at the beginning. Because you had, like, all of this multiplicative scale. Like, you had attack speed, critical strike chance, and critical strike damage. Where the value of one was multiplied against the value of the other two. And then you also had weapon damage that was, like, a base multiplier for those three things to multiply off of. It was crazy. Core of the game was just really hard to work with. Diablo 4. So, you've been watching a few minutes of the video. I'm just going to hit you guys with it. What do I think Diablo 4 is? How good is Diablo 4? Uh -huh. Out of 10, Crip, tell us. Well, if what we were playing this last weekend is where they currently are with development, more or less, yep. knowing that the game is going to be fully released for console and PC and whatever else in two and a half months from now, I think the game will launch and be about six stars out of ten. That's kind of where oh. I would rate it. Now, with that said, I think it's important to note that oh. a lot of that comes from the fact that I think That's a, a low lot number. of mechanics in this game just need a little bit of work. But it okay. needs to be very smart work. All right. Like, there's a lot of mechanics that are really rough, kind of unfinished, I would say, have serious problems. And some of them can be fixed fairly easily, and some require quite clever solutions that I don't even have right now. And I think all of that, because the overall system of Diablo 4 is complex, will take some time. And I certainly think it's going to take way more than two and a half months to get the game to that point where it is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And I do think that in the very positive case, where this development cycle continues on after the game's release i think like a year from its release like the third maybe second season because it is going to be launching with seasons um, i think it could be like a nine out of ten maybe nine and a half out of ten game i can i think that's probably true and i don't know if there's a way for diablo 4 to release as a nine out of ten in the way that he's talking about because you think about, like, PoE, whenever it released, it wasn't a 9 out of 10 game. It had a million fucking problems. So it took time to develop all the systems that are built on top of each other, that are developed, like, you know, circumstantially around the, like, different compounding variables, and there's this interconnectivity. Like, I, I think this is very true, and it, it's not even a bad thing. It's just the nature of developing a live service game. It's the starting point of a live service game like this is not going to be, hopefully, right? Hopefully, it's not going to be the best it's going to be. It's going to continue to get better. Kind of understand the goals that the game tries to hit. I can kind of understand where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think it's quite there, and it would really surprise me if it gets there in the time period of two and a half months. Ooh. But 
you know what? Maybe maybe they're way ahead, of, way more ahead in development than the beta that we're playing, or maybe they're really going to go ham and knock it out of the park in the coming weeks. 100%. But I just wouldn't bet on it, and I want to be straight with you guys. He's played Wizard games now, for a long time. We're going to head. Kriparian was the guy that um, his guild in Old War, uh, in order to kill Yog Saron, who's one of the world first guilds, uh, they had a paladin with righteous fury healing himself outside of the room that would aggro the ants from yogg saron outside of the room and delete the fucking ants so he is very very fucking experienced with this into character highlight so yeah i don't know if i played back like for that 40 hours the first thing i did oh, wow. is i leveled each of the three playable classes to level 25 jesus this is my most successful one. Yeah, it's a wizard. And I want to give you guys this highlight because it will act as something that you can see Makes and sense. understand sure, sure. in practice. Yeah. How does this game work? How does a character come together? What is happening on the screen? So we'll just load into this dungeon here. This is a dungeon that you know I kind of like particularly. And I'll show you how my build works more or less okay. the build revolves largely around the skill hydra it is a skill you will be familiar with if you've played diablo 2 or diablo oh, yes. 3 for example you put a guy down four heads the fourth head only spawns if i have nearly full health and to maintain that on a number of other reasons i protect my life with barriers barriers are kind of like temporary life pools yep so i put hydras down the hydras attack stuff and it works pretty well. Yeah, better, worse, better than And as you'll notice, they drop rare items, they drop blue items. Mm -hmm. And the Hydras, they explode when they get hit. And that's because of the sorcerer-specific mechanic the um, where you can turn skills into passives. Now, they, yep. they're not like skills that are just used passively. They're used in individual ways. Which and is it's a very really cool. I like that a lot. As I'll show you pretty soon. The characters, uh, sorry, the, the monsters around are going to be scaling with my level. So it is kind of what you expect. The character has a large array of defensive cooldowns. And the character doesn't really use mana. Mana regenerates. I could be casting more abilities to yep. spend my mana. But as you'll see through the rest of the character, it doesn't really make sense to do that. No. The two, um, the two hydras that I'm putting down... Well, they really just do enough work. They do everything. Hey, look at that. We got two, two legendaries. legendaries. Hooray. Okay. Let's just leave the dungeon. It'll port me out. And I will show you how the character works in practice. Okay. So, in terms of the character's abilities, which is where we're going to start, we have this form of skill tree. You have to get two points in this part of the tree in order to unlock this part of the tree. Then, I think it's like five points later, you unlock this part, mm -hmm. then like f three to five points later, this part, and so on. Yep. It's something like that. There is a Paragon system that unlocks at level 50, apparently. We don't have a lot of details about that, but we'll go into that as we talk about the pros and cons later on. So you have to get a starting skill. The starting skills uh, don't cost any mana, and they're generally fairly weak. I get fire, Firebolt and Arclash. I max out Fireball, and I'll explain in a second why I do that, which unlocks the ne next set. And I have a lot of defensive abilities, but I don't actually have these specced in. You can see Rank 1, Item Contribution 1. Yeah, it's That's because gear. my amulet has plus 1 rank to all Conjuration skills and plus 1 rank to all Defensive That's a good skills. So you can tell items are really powerful, and they actually shape how you build your character. So you're not going to see a situation where use this build. There's always going to be some variations, at least based on the items that you have acquired. Which because, is good. This you is know, a good thing. Getting all the defensive skills for free, I don't have to put a single point in one of them. I can move on to the next cluster. Mm -hmm. Now, the later clusters also have some passives. For example, Glass Cannon, you I deal 12% increased damage, but you it take 6% more, more damage. That's a pretty basic one. There's a lot of basic ones, but as you go further down the tree, they get a bit more complicated. We mm -hmm. max out Hydra. We have rank 8 Hydra. Rank 5 is the most you can put in by just 
attributing points to the skill tree from levels and whatnot. Big dick hydras. And you can increase the rank through items. In terms of damage scaling, you are looking at a 10% increase in damage per level. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Big seven, right? It seems That's to be 10% right. every level compounded. And that is not a lot, but it is nevertheless somewhat significant. Um, I actually don't have any of those, but most of my damage is fire, so I have mm -hmm. the pyromancy. When you're healthy, it defines healthy as over 80 through the advanced tooltip. Some areas you can only pick one skill. The ultimate ones, you can only pick one skill, so I pick deep freeze. Just have a quick look at the skills. So flame shield can break crowd control, and it gives me a two-second immunity period. You can see this is the unstoppable and the immune. I have Ice Armor, which just gives me a massive barrier and allows me to break a few things. The Hydra skill, as I highlighted in the instance. Deep Freeze is the ultimate. It gives me complete immunity for four seconds. I stand still freeze myself, but this actually does a lot of damage. And it's a very good skill to use on bosses offensively because the boss stands still trying to attack you uh, and, well, it doesn't do a very good job at that. But it stands still, so your Hydras never miss. I have Ice Blades. Ice Blades are a conjuration, and I only really use them to proc the vulnerable debuff. It's a pretty common debuff, but it's not that common for Sorcerer, so getting 20% increased damage when those do a few hits is very nice. And oh, I should have done that. That's a good idea. I didn't even read the other spells. That's a good idea. I should have done that. That's way better than what mine was. Well, shit. And I have teleport, Damn, that's crazy. which can I once again be used yeah. while crowd control to break crowd, crowd control. Uh -huh. The main advantage with Hydra is that it does quite a bit of damage, but it's mostly single target. You can place it far yeah. away. And effectively, because of this mechanic, you, you have shit. an invincible totem-like exactly. creation. You can actually strike enemies two screens away that's because right. the Hydra oh, that's actually right. hits quite far. Big Dick Each Hydras. class in Diablo 4 has its own mechanic that is individual to that class. Big For damage. Sorcerer, it is the enchantment system. So these are the skills, and these are the enchantments here. You have one enchantment that unlocks after doing a quest at level 15, and you have a second one that unlocks when you do a quest at level 30. Now, you can change your enchantment even in combat, so it's, it's a very fluid system, but you need to have a point in the skill or you need to get the skill from an item in order to do this. Each skill has a very unique enchantment effect. One of the ones that I use for this character if I want if I'm doing like a boss is Firebolt. Direct damage from skills applies up to an additional 23% burning damage over 8 seconds. Since Hydra attacks individually and this is not a lucky hit, this actually increases the damage of my Hydra, though over 8 seconds, by about 40 to 50%. So it's a massive single a target lot. boost for very tanky bosses like world bosses. Typically, though, I use the Fireball enchantment effect, and you can see it at the bottom there. You can see yeah, it here. A barb doesn't do this. Like, a barb is just like, so I have a lot of health, and if things hit me, I do damage to them. But it takes me a while to move anywhere and do anything. Two. Yeah. Fireball enchantment. When you kill an enemy, they explode in a fireball for 50% of its damage. So that means that I basically have a corpse explosion-like effect, which for those of you that have played Path of Exile, yeah. you know is Six quite HS. good. Yes. And because it Ooh. uses the damage of Impulsive. the fireball, unlike the firebolt one, for example, in some cases it will use the skills, in some cases it won't use the skill. I actually want to max out Fireball because I want the Fireball on kill to do as much damage as possible. And the reason is that Hydra, while it does a lot of single target damage, it tends to kind of get stuck by attacking multiple and random targets around it. It's actually a pretty awful area of effect skill. It's not so good the for build clear. quite yeah. heavily relies on some kind of corpse explosion mechanic like Fireball. It doesn't actually explode the corpses, but you know what I mean. Now, defensively, we have uh, largely incorporated through items. 
See, he get the, the same one I did. I See, I knew it was a good idea. Orange there. I knew deal it. Sixty-four percent increased damage while you have a barrier yep. active. There is an aspect here. Using a cooldown grants 30% of your maximum life as a barrier for 5 seconds. That's why I'm using so many skills that seem kind of overlapping, too many defensive cooldowns and all that. <laughs> I'm really just using them because they have cooldowns, so I can have a barrier on my character all the time. Always damage. There's also this skill where you gain 5% damage reduction against the elites. It's also against the bosses and players, by the way. This specific one, not the elite keyword, yep. it's just not labeled properly. This one is going to be so fucking OP in like higher levels like this is going to be probably i would say mandatory if you haven't taken damage from one up to 50 percent this only goes down it's actually huge you can see it here that i have 50 stacks it only drops if i take life damage so the goal of this character is to always have barriers up to essentially take half damage from the only real like enemies that deal meaningful well, damage to me and to have a consistent 64% more damage through the weapon. A quick look through the rest of my gear. I have plus two Hydra on a helmet. Uh, with, it's an immune bubble, so if I ever drop below 80, I get an immune yep. bubble for five seconds. That, like, never happens, though. Damaging an elite gives Power me a barrier. DR, yeah. So that's kind of like another thing to proc yeah, pretty easily. This gives me an I extra Hydra. Seen. Normally, you can only cast yeah. one Hydra. But with Double that hydra. item, it reduces the duration, Double but you hydra. can get yep. two. Oh, big. It, effect big. it effectively doubles my DPS with this build. But if you incorporate other skills besides Hydra, which you absolutely can in a Hydra build, it's not exactly doubling your DPS. It's good. Armor, if you hit stuff with two Hydras, I'm often over 60 stacks, up to 80 stacks if it's a long-standing stationary target. The boots don't have anything impressive, so but I really like damage. the evade grants movement speed so it has an evade mechanic yeah. having movement speed after it is really nice because it does feel like it takes forever to get around yeah i have this one too the this amulet has good. plus one all conjuration and plus one defensive skills that's hydras. which is an incredibly powerful uh attribute to have that's big you might use these items long after their you know uh, original find just because of the skill contribution in some cases mm -hmm. And uh, I get uh, increased damage based on how much primary resource I have when this? they're yeah. cast. And because Hydra is the only one that uses resource and sorcerers regenerate it quickly, well, that's going to be full buff a lot of the mm -hmm. time. Uh, this just has good stats and deal increased damage for each second you stand still. You can uh, see my attack power is there. If I move, I lose the buff completely. And if I wait a few seconds, it goes back up. But interestingly enough, if I teleport, it is not oh counting God. as moving, so it retains the buff in its entirety. Oh and this is God. actually a very big deal on bosses. Oh my God, people so, did this with fucking PoE. What were those fucking boots? Those fucking boots that would stack up uh, chargers? Oh my God, I didn't even know that. It was like Rikisha's Impatience or some fucking shit. Oh my God. This character yeah. is a defense monster because I have almost entirely defensive abilities. Yeah. It is an offense monster. It is a clear speed monster, and it is pretty easy to play. In terms of builds, if this was a PoE build, this would be a 10 out of 10 in every category build, yeah. which is why I will almost certainly be playing um, Sorcerer on launch. See, uh, it, see guys? See? Uh, that's see, it's just that simple if not this build i feel like yep. the enchantment system and the very complex parts of it yeah, uh, allow problems. for almost certainly some game breaking mechanics to you know go through the cracks and as you know i will start to talk about yeah. there are a lot of cracks now this part of the video i want to talk about the good things about the game the bad thing is about the game just so you guys can understand with full clarity why i think so why some other people might have this opinion because not everyone is good at explaining and giving evidence for their opinions yeah. so one of the best things about diablo 4 is the graphics i don't even have my graphics maxed out because i actually blue screened i guess because it's a beta they look good but you can see the shadows are super dynamic game every be good. you know the snow the, the the little leaves are moving. You can draw a dick in the snow.
the fire, it has smoke. You can see it's like a picturesque game. It's unbelievable detail. When you're zoomed out like this, you take it no, for granted. If you don't have good eyesight, you're certainly going to take it for granted. But in terms of overall details, visually speaking, the world environment, the graphics, the mm -hmm. theming, it is unbelievably good. I would say it is, I don't play every game that releases, but it is certainly the best crafted visual game in terms of the gameplay. Forget the cutscenes, I don't care about the cutscenes. In terms of the gameplay that I have ever seen, okay? I think it is that good. The gra I, I would agree. I think the graphics for Diablo 4, there are no games out there that are like distinguishably better than this in terms of ARPGs. Yeah, it is insanely good. Another good thing is combat. Combat is crisp. When you use a skill, it uses the skill. Also, like, keep in mind, guys, every time that you see the graphics, you're always looking at a downscaled version of what it actually looks like on the PC because of rendering and bitrate and shit like that pretty nice the one thing i have with skills is you can only have six skills on your bars probably to accommodate console players and i yep. can tell you for a fact that that Caveman. sucks okay if you want to think about it in a different way you can actually bind more skills in diablo 2 okay which is i believe a 23 year old game right now than you can in this game and obviously that is done because they want to release a multi-platform game, which, as someone who doesn't care that they release a multi-platform game, is a bit unfortunate. I think they could have added seven or eight. Okay? I think they absolutely could have. Uh, many games have that. I recently played Wulong. It had more than fucking six buttons in it. Uh-uh. Nope. There's 100% a way to do this. This that would have been better. But nevertheless, the combat is great. It's not a case where, you know, you think you dodged it, but you didn't dodge it. There's only one thing that's a bit weird. There's a lot of that crowd grab, control effects. Yeah. And if you use your dodge to try me. to dodge a crowd control effect, but you just mistime it and it hits you right after you come out of, the, like, the stun or whatever, then it just burns your dodge in the direction you initially cast it. But if that's, like, five seconds later, you might actually be killing off your character and burning your dodge. So, that's you know, bad. again, a little bit of details. As I mentioned yeah. early on, this game is very rough happen. around the edges, but I can see that most aspects of combat are really well done, and they feel very good. The other aspect is character depth. I talked about my character. I showed, you know, all these different things. And um, there is so much more here than you might realize. And I think it's important for me to go over this in some detail. So there's going to be five classes. Each class has his own subset mechanic, which is incredibly complicated. I highlighted a build, but... Who knows what the best ability is? When we have two abilities, who knows what the best two abilities are? You know? Well, Macroll does, and we just go to that website, and then it tells us what the best two abilities are, and then we copy that, and we never deviate from it because those are the best ones on the internet, and so that's it. Problem solved. Uh, we don't need to think about this anymore, and uh, on to bigger and better things. Will I continue using Fireball? I don't know. I might use Fireball to stack separate burns and to get a lot of free firewalls, in which case I have to put points in firewalls. But again, some people don't realize this is not a skill tree where you just get everything you want. Yeah. Okay? At level 50, we're going to get something with Paragons, and we'll go into that in a second. It feels to me like the skill tree is going to be very limiting. You're going to want to get everything, but you can't get everything. And that's when it gets interesting. That's when the decisions start yeah, to and really that's matter. In terms of the item-based stuff... I think that uh, Blizzard really nailed that with the WoW talent trees. I can't speak for every class, but I know for Warriors, I think my talent tree is good. It is objectively... Not objectively, but it is... It, I would say it is... In my mind, it is actually good. And I'm happy about it. And they, they did nail that. You can see some items have three because they're actually rares that I converted into legendaries. If you find yeah. a legendary that... Oh, wow. That's a really good drop. So this legendary that just dropped while I was playing earlier, 
it has the modifier that I actually have on my chest. On my chest, it's imprinted. Now, yeah. this one, based on its item level, has a maximum roll. 315 to 630. Okay. That's unbelievable. That's, crazy. Uh, that's actually Holy kind shit. of lucky. Now, this item... Its actual stats on itself, they're not very good. I don't care about they're thorns. I don't care that much about the two resists. I get lots of resistance because it scales intelligence. Okay? But the legendary ability, I can take that to the occultist and make it into an item. In fact, the one on my pants, I have made into an item. I can then take a piece of gear. Let's say this chest had a terrible ability, but it had really good stats. I can then take that piece and put the ability that I extracted from another legendary into it, I think changing this is awesome. its legendary yeah. ability. This system this is, very is good. quite deep. I like it. It's quite deep because you're going to find many types of items that are going to be useful to you. In terms of rares, Semi rares builds, have yeah. three stats. People say they're going to have five at the end game. I don't know. All That's I know what, yeah. is what's in front of me. Every rare I found had three stats on it. Every legendary had four stats on it. it makes legendary You can re-roll one stat. It's pretty expensive to do so to try to perfect the item, and it gets more expensive each time you do that. Nope. To re-roll a stat on a legendary item is crazy expensive. To re-roll a stat on a rare item is not that expensive at all. The first time. So then it getting gets way more expensive. a rare with three perfect stats that you then imprint a legendary ability converting into legendary it's only going to have three stats but it's quite easy to have three of the best stats that you're looking for it is incredibly hard to find a legendary with four of the stats that you're looking for so the item system is a lot deeper than people realize the aspects some of them can only be found on items but some of them are found as dungeon rewards yeah there are different categories to them, and I'll explain why this is relevant. There's utility, which goes on a bunch of stuff, but generally... Yeah, you can't put every affix on every type of item. And also, like, each of the affixes have different empowerment levels. Like, weapons make the affixes way stronger. Necklaces make them... The, uh, weapons are, like, 100%, and then, uh, uh, like, necklaces are 50 so, like, it makes it even more complex. That's why he had barrier on his weapon and not on his neck or anywhere else. Do that on boots or something. It's big. There's resource, which is only rings. But again, these are usually not super powerful. Mm -hmm. Mobility, amulet, and boots. You'll see that amulets can be almost everything. The defensive you ones are one really each. strong, and the offensive ones are really strong. So, like, you and like you can see that the ones. amulet is shared between the two. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. In effect, there are certain multipliers with their legendary yep. powers See, that yep, come into play. For example, this here can uh, show up on random legendaries that I find as gloves, amulets, rings, or one-handed or two-handed weapons. I extract it, and then I can choose where I want to put it. But if I put it in a two-handed weapon, it gets double the bonus. So See, I, I actually think this is this could make Barbarian ridiculously fucking good at max level, because Barbarian uses two two-handed weapons. So you can have two doubly powered uh, affixes at the same time, all the time. Not to mention, like, you have that on top of your other two weapons really need to be careful which ability I want effectively doubled on my character. Double down. The yep. amulet about that. can yep. have Double down. all but the ring exclusive resource ones, which again aren't that really important. The amulet can have both offense or defense. So the amulet kind of becomes the flexible slot where it really tips the scale. Do you want yep. a more offensive character or do you want a more defensive character overall? Yeah, and again, the amulet hand. has the power increased by 50% as well. So it's not just one more slot. It's 1.5 slots. Yep. And that is a pretty big deal. Now, um, I've crafted a pretty powerful build here, but we've left out a pretty big part of it. Right. What are Paragon, Paragon levels? Yep, there it is. He's well, the, the short part. answer is that we don't know. But I found this little article that... My concern is that Blizzard doesn't know. Apparently, they said, oh, we're going to show it to you guys after the beta. Hey, don't worry about it. It's going to... You're going to see. It's, it's going to be all right. But I am worried about these Paragon points. Shows some of the, you know, design. 
These are Paragon boards, and as you can see from the edges here, this is apparently from December 2021, so a long time ago, not finals, from one of their blog posts, I believe. Uh -huh. I believe you link these up. So there's probably some strategies yeah. in, one, which Paragon boards you're actually going to select. I don't even know how you find them, how you modify them, how you position them, and link them up with one another. Do you want this stuff here? Do you want that stuff there? Do you want that stuff there? Like these have different colors, so I imagine they, they do different things. Yeah, yeah. And then they have a different UI here, but it looks, it, the core concepts seem the same. And this. People that I've seen review Diablo 4 talk about how it's a more accessible game than Path of Exile. It's, you know, it's, it's a much easier and more approachable game. But then I look at these Paragon boards, and again, this this article is from like August 2022. So, you know, maybe this means nothing, but what I see is three different UIs of the same concept. And that concept is an incredibly deep and complicated layer on top of an already fairly deep and complicated layer for the rest of your character. So the character True. depth in Diablo 4, I think is gonna take some people by surprise. I think people really don't understand that this game is a lot deeper, a lot more PoE-like in character design than people think. Now, everything that I just mentioned, the skills, the items, the aspects, all that kind of stuff. Another thing that's really good about Diablo 4 is the gold. It is a level 25 experience. It might mean absolutely nothing, but it seems like you always want a little bit more gold than you have, but not that much more. It feels like gold is valuable in the game, at least in the beta that we have, and it is not at all meaningless. Upgrading gear. Which I think is good. I am very much an advocate of having gold matter. Yeah, that, that's good. Changing aspects around, all that kind of stuff. It seems like gold actually has a very thoughtful value that seems to scale as your character does which is really cool and I think is typically a pretty ambitious goal to have in a game like this one. Almost always the main currency of a game that's easy to find like gold quickly becomes worthless or the gold sinks are ones that just go away after a while. Again, it's a beta low level experience, but it certainly seems like the gold spending in the game is very balanced and has a lot of thought behind it to get it to i think that gold will will not matter that much after a while i i, I think that gold only matters because it's a three-day beta because like i farmed out a lot of gold and i had like a lot of my items that were three or four stars and i knew that like if i had spent probably five more hours farming I would have everything maxed out and I would have no no use for gold other than min maxing one new item. And also I think that gold won't matter as much because I do believe that the meta for Diablo 4 at max level will be rerolling rares which is cheaper. Because rares are 5 stat and legendaries are 4. So I I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Your two-hander costs 500k for full upgrade? Yeah, but I can make 500k gold in like two or three hours. And then I'm done. And I never have to do it again. At this point. Now we'll get to the bad stuff. Okay. So the UI is, I think, one of the weakest things about the game. The trade menu is like worse than like Diablo 2. Items have scrolls, like I have to scroll That's down silly. to see the rest yeah. of the item. In some cases, especially for weapons on like barbarians, you can't even see the legendary power unless you hover over the item and scroll down. You can't see the items if you hover over them quickly because there's some kind of like transparency transition. And you're like, who cares, Crip? Well, I'm gonna, if I clear this dungeon, I'm going to have nearly a full inventory of rare and legendary items. And as I just talked about, rare items have value. Yeah. I actually really want to know which rare items I'm going to find that have not even three stats I'm looking for. 
two stats that I'm looking for. And re -roll the I third actually one. need to look at the yeah. items pretty quickly because I don't want to spend hours looking at items after I do a dungeon. Yeah, so they should have a way to like automatically fucking delete items that are three stat at max level. Or, or even like, in my opinion, four stat items. Because like the only ones you'd really want past like the first few days is, is like five stats. So it, it's it's really not good, okay? There's no map overlay. It's this tiny thing. You yeah. can't really zoom that in or out, so you have to use the general map key. When you have the map key up, you can't see your health bar on your character. You can't see your character yeah. in any way. This He's map's complaining about the same thing that I think it was DLS Lily said, that, like, we need a, you know, like in PoE, you press tab, and it shows, like, the overlay, and, and it's, like, transparent over the uh, actual game. We 100% need this in Diablo 4, and there is no value in not having it. Screen is horrible. If you have two different zones of quests that you have to go to and you track one, they're the same color. So you don't even yeah. know which quest you're targeting and where, where you need to go with that. For a game as visually stunning as this, the UI is surprisingly weak. I think quest um, tracking is better. I am not at all pleased with the UI in this game. I think it needs a lot of work. Other aspect... I personally didn't give a fuck about it, but I think everything that he brought up was totally true. It, it's all true. Especially, like, it sounds really stupid, but the mousing over the items thing is actually really big. Is the game costs a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, I'm not going to get into all that kind of stuff, but as a Canadian, I believe the cheapest I can buy the game for is like, like $80, right? $79, like $80. Yeah. Almost the same U.S. currency, if you're curious. Um, but, you know, I haven't been playing Diablo for like 30 years to play four days after some people. So with like the yeah. premium version of the game, which oh, yeah. costs oh yeah, oh yeah, hey, you gotta get him. Oh, you gotta get him with that. Oh, you play the game just a few days early. Oh, we got you. Yep, a hundred and ten or a hundred and twenty dollars. I get to play four days early on the actual release, and I get a yep. bunch of cosmetics, and I get the battle pass. And if I pay $130, I get all of that, some other cosmetics, and, another and 20 cosmetic. accelerated levels in the battle pass. Now, they've been pretty clear, and they've said that the battle pass has um, only cosmetic-type stuff, but... Yeah, I don't really know if that is going to turn out to be the case 100%. I hope it's not, because if it's not, I can make so many YouTube videos farming outrage about this, it's going to be great. It's better for me if Diablo turns into being pay to win. It is so good for me if that happens. In one post, again, fairly early on, so maybe it's I not true anymore. Really hope they so. said there's going to be XP potions in the free part of the battle pass. But yes. if I'm getting 20 levels, I don't know. Now, is it they, 20 levels in the premium version or 20 levels in the base one? That's a very good point. Haven't said anything about that in quite a long while, so maybe that's not even the case. You can craft XP potions, so with like nothing, it's like almost it's like five percent XP. But yeah. you know you can, so maybe maybe just getting one more XP potion in the battle class is effectively meaningless. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, it's tough to say, but overall they're really milking this for money. Okay. Blizzard's a public company. They're worth like $70 billion. Microsoft wants 69. to buy them. This is going to be a for-profit game. It might not be a pay-to-win yes. game, but it is going to be a for-profit game. Okay. People criticize like Lost Ark because it had like early access. But Lost Ark, when it came out, it was free for everyone. You could say that. How much was Diablo 2 whenever it came out? Yeah, how much was Diablo 2 whenever it came out? It was $40. 40 USD and 60 Canadian dollars. Okay. 60 and 60 Canadian dollars. Okay. So let's see how much it is 
with 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 like a, a fucking inflation and shit. What year did it come out? Diablo 2 came out in the year 2000, is that correct? Yes, okay. Intervalue, $40. Calculate, $67. We're getting milked. Oh, we're getting fucking milked. It's two extra dollars. Blizzard's is stealing. Yep, there we go. Two extra fucking dollars. I can't believe this. It's Bobby's world after all. I knew it. Fuck. So, yeah, there is that. If this game is going to be successful, it's going to have seasons. I don't imagine you're going to buy seasons, but if this game's going to be that successful, no. it's going to have expansions. It'll have battle passes, and you buy the battle pass for the season. And let me tell you, whatever you're paying for the game now... You're probably paying about that much for any expansions that Diablo 4 is going to have. And yeah, I got a feeling it's going to be a... <laughs> you got to buy them triple downs to get into that expansion. And as a Canadian video gamer on the internet, yeah. like myself, it doesn't really bother me that I'm paying $100 to play this game. But understandably for people around the world, that is not even close to the same. So oh yeah, there's like plenty of people in like fucking some of these South American countries where it's like this is the equivalent of like somebody buying a new gaming PC. It's absolutely insane. So yeah, that actually does really suck. Uh, one other part that I think is extremely weak and really needs to be addressed immediately is dungeon mechanics. Yeah. The end game, as far as we know, as far as they've talked about it, has to do with Nightmare Sigils, which is effectively like upgrading affixes, the dungeons right? that you already run as you're playing through the campaign. Yeah, like map affixes and shit. With, like, modifiers. Yeah. Very much like maps in Path of Exile. You make them harder, they get, like, higher level mobs and all that, and you get better loot or something. I would imagine, I anyway. Imagine. I, 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 would, I would hope so. Now... What that essentially means is that you're going to be running the dungeons that you're kind of running right now, just with higher difficulties. Maybe <laughs> significantly higher difficulties. While the difficulty might be good and all, the actual mechanics in the dungeons are horrible. They are not fun. And if it is the core of the endgame of Diablo 4, we don't know if that's 100%, but... The endgame dungeon, the mechanics for the bosses are horrible. I think that there are maybe two or three bosses where it is... He didn't say bosses? Oh, oh. For the dungeon, not the boss? Okay, my... But okay. I think it might be, based on what we've seen, and I'll give you evidence for that. That's very concerning. It's very concerning because there are mechanics like kill all the monsters before you can get to the boss. All the monsters. Oh, bro. Like, I remember in Path of Exile, they had this fucking quest. And it was in Act 1. And you had to fucking kill every single, like, undead skeleton. And it was just the den of evil. And it's still, it's still there. Pet, fetid fucking pool. And I do it every single league. And it's like, I, I do it to nostalgically make myself mad. I don't even know if you have to do it. I, I, I think you just get respect points. I have no idea. But, like, I do it every single league. And I was like, yeah, I remember this. It was just fucking annoying. And I was there the first time, like, 20 minutes. 30 minutes. Where is he? Where the fuck is he? I can't find him. We're not talking about Den of Evil here, okay? where you have a character with oh, no yep, abilities yeah. That's it. that you yep. really need to kill any monster you find in your way to get a few levels for you to actually have a character and Den of Evil has like 35 monsters in it including one at the end that usually it's drops an rare and magical items. Okay? Oh, he also resurrects No, we're monsters. talking about full-on dungeons that have like 300 monsters. In some cases that spawn other monsters as part of yeah. their abilities and you need to kill every single one until you can access the boss i don't think those are fun like i even the parts like you know like in the dungeons and in, in the in the beta there were like 
you would uh, you would cl click the two gates to unlock the big gate and then you go through the big gate and then the second part of it was just killing all the mobs like they had this even in diablo 4 beta and it was fucking annoying i didn't like it i hate that D yep and that's it's true it's not just a preference uh -huh. you might think it's like oh you know what crip i like den of evil that's great that's good for you idiot here's the thing about that we're talking about likely the end game content yes these are not going to be easy mobs in the end game content, I imagine. Like, Diablo 3 is not really easy in the end game. You play it at your own difficulty level, right? So, who yeah, knows? Sure. It might be something like that. So, what if you kill 295 monsters oh, and then you encounter a rare that you can't kill? You know what you're going to do? You're going to leave the dungeon. Yep. And then you're going to remember this video. And you're going to remember that Crypt told you that the mechanic sucks. That mechanic sucks. So, like, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about being at 298, and there's two bats at the beginning of the dungeon. I just didn't see them because they're behind a wall. And I got to run all the way around to find these two little bats. For what? There's a colossal difference between killing every monster in a 300 monster dungeon and killing 95% of them. Yeah. I don't know why a system of just killing 95%, why is that not good enough? Just have us kill most of them to proceed in the dungeon. And like, you know that like in, if you played PoE again, there's that one fucking map with Captain Fairgraves where you have to kill all the fucking pirates that turn into ghosts. And that map pisses me off Every fucking league that I play the game. Yeah, Malk Malkun, yeah, it's 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 fucking annoying. And then on top of that, you know how he dies, and then like the items will obscure the hammers, and then he'll fucking kill you sometimes because you can't fucking see him because you're dealing with the items. It, it's so goddamn annoying. Yes, so it, it's like the, I have like a, a um a contemporary example of this. It's so bad. A lot of dungeon oh. mechanics are like, they have like two pedestals. I think one of the dungeons has three pedestals. And you have to go in different corners of the dungeon to kill a mob oh, or yeah. just retrieve an item off a shelf. Click the thing. And then you take that item and you put it back on the pedestal. The item is kind of on your character. Actually, you can usually see it on yeah. your character, which is a really cool thing, going back to the amazing graphics and uh, image-based design That's in the game. Annoying, but you can't hold you can't more than one of these true. items. Yep. So I what often about, happens is you backtrack this. the entire dungeon more than once yep. over. I did this. More than twice over and you're mad in some doing cases. It. You're mad the whole time. And each time you interact with an object, it is interruptible. That's right. And it takes like five, six, seven, eight. And then if you spam click on it, it makes the object no longer interactable for like three more seconds. And so like now you're sitting there for three seconds getting mad. And then you're walked over there and you're mad because you forgot to click the thing the first time because it went fucking immune the first time. And so now you're sitting there clicking at it and you're fucking mad. You're Now you're clicking fast because you're mad and it's not working either. So you got to slow down. You fucking pissed off. It's Oh. It takes like many seconds. It takes like eight seconds to pick up a yep. jewel from a guy that you killed. And it takes eight seconds to put the jewel on the pedestal, okay? You're like, Crypt, well, who cares, right? In this game... You will. After, after you've done the same dungeon 50 times, you will care. There's ore. Do you know how long it takes to mine ore? Zero seconds. Yep. Okay. It takes zero seconds to extract metal from a rock in the ground. That's right. When you're running around the Silver world. Silver and iron. And it takes you At eight seconds time. to drop a jewel on a pedestal. That's right. That can be interrupted. It's a little rock. By any form of damage. Okay. And it gets even worse. In one case, you have to click on two levers. Mm -hmm. And I have a uh, really yeah, hard time yeah. actually seeing where the levers are. And if you go to the levers, there's like traps Slice, yeah. under them so you're just like trying to time traps to click on like a seven second lever to open the door to the boss it's like what is that how is this fun people were telling me in chat that for? those those traps actually did a lot of damage one guy lost his character to trap damage from trying to click on a lever 
I, I mean, can tell you that is not going to be a fun experience for hardcore characters, okay? The bosses themselves. The bosses are heavily repeated in the beta. That might just be the beta, okay? I, I mean, you played Diablo 3. What do you think? Hope that is just the beta. Uh, there's not that many monster types from my experience. Uh -huh. There's a massive overworld and all that, but it's actually not that many monster types. The abilities the monsters have are often not very interesting. One of the abilities, it binds you and uh, you can't move your character. For oh, I hate this fucking, it's the blood bishop. And it's so, it's so janky and there's no indicator for whether you're out of it. And like, I'll get grabbed by it. And like my head, I'll be like over here. He'll be over here. He'll grab me. I'll go whoop. It'll be like some fucking Dark Souls 2 hitbox situation. <laughs> This is the worst one. It's the worst fight. I'm so glad he's bringing this one up. So true. Like eight seconds while it's dealing damage and to And it you. heals him. Not all characters have crowd control breaks like sorcerers do. Okay? Uh, that's think really of, crappy. Won't somebody like, think of the barbs? I don't know. I didn't like that. In general, it sucks. I've also felt that there's almost no regard for melee on these true. encounters. And I've kind of been saying that Barbarian is bad true now we only have up to level 25 yep and of course if you grind like crazy and have a completely decked out character level 25 which you will not do leveling up by the way i hope not well yeah okay you yeah, might have a pretty easy experience playing barbarian but the boss fights are not at all melee friendly no barbarian has fury which unlike Every other character in the game, only be their resource goes range. down if they're not in combat, regenerating it through their generators. So with a Barbarian, you have to deal with the boss mechanics that are very anti-melee. It's like the boss puts down a poison cloud and he's like, all right, I live here now. No, I'm not going to move. Why would I move? I just put down a poison cloud. <laughs> Come hit me. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? It's so bad. Attack to generate fury, and then use that fury to use and launch your biggest attacks. Yeah. The other characters, Whirlwind. they just use their attacks from range. Yeah, imagine that. And they that. don't have to generate their resource. What does that mean? I feel like the characters are actually more or less in the same ballpark We'll talk about that in a second. In terms of like target dummy DPS, yeah, stationary, exactly, no reaction target dummy. This is see, this is what I was saying. Barbarian. Somebody's like, oh, look at the barbarian. It's like the barbarian sits there, thirty-five fucking seconds walking. <sighs> Finally gets to the boss. Bonk. See, look, they're really good. Meanwhile, bro, I already killed it. Like I went all the way down there. I killed him in three seconds, and I'm in the next dungeon. Like I'm, I'm, I, bro, I'm down the road. This guy's on the sidewalk. DPS, but if you consider the real world example in yeah. Diablo Four, some of these boss fights have like, at best case, fifty percent DPS uptime because yeah, exactly. you just can't be near the boss. You can't. Yeah, it's not fun. Like, ultimately, like, I don't care about, like, oh, well, it's more challenging and it's harder that way. I don't care. It's not fun. It's fucking annoying. I fucking hate running after a, a, some spider on, on cocaine. And then guess what happens whenever he puts the fucking web on you? Well, now you're even slower. And he's running away. And you know exactly the spider that I am talking about. You know him. And he runs away. And guess what? There's pillars in the room. Guess where he goes? <laughs> Gets around the pillar. <laughs> you know? And then you get over to him. It goes to another pillar. And I'm like, this is... I paid $70 for this? No. I'm done. Like, I'm playing a mage. Fuck this. this. sucks. Do anything other than run with your character. A class like a sorcerer, yep. where the mana is regenerating while you're running, 
Yep. You actually lose Maximize less downtime. than half your damage yep. if you have 50% damage uptime. Because you, spend all you can mana. actually use heavier mana spenders in the window mm -hmm. where you can do damage. A barbarian that Effective loses DPS. their primary resource while That's they're right. not gaining it from using generators Sorcerers actually twice, loses lose more twice. than half their damage. That's right. So while, again, at level 25, the ballpark damage is more or less in the same uh, ballpark, let's say, um, mm -hmm. the, the real damage that you end up doing on the encounters while doing the mechanics, the barbarian falls off a cliff, and not just exactly. in terms of numbers, yep. it's just a miserable experience it sucks. chasing monsters. It sucks fucking dick. It, it's like, again, the co-carnage clip of him fighting those uh, fucking, those three succubuses, and he's sitting there as a barbarian running laps around it like he's doing the fucking pacer test in middle school. And meanwhile, they're throwing the little, you know, fucking shooting these things at him. And eventually, uh, guys, it's an online game. So he's out of it. He is, the animation for his character is totally fucking out of it. He gets hit. And he's dead. Hardcore character, by the way. Back down to zero. Meanwhile, my wizard, I was like, oh, is that the boss? Oh, it, oh, okay, it's done now. All right, cool. Well, let's go do something else now. That was easy. Monsters that run away from you, dealing with monsters teleporting oh. away from you, deciding on whether you're going to die in the puddle, the boss constantly spawns it, directly under yes. it, and then oh. reconsidering why you're not playing a class that has an ability that can be used from like three pixels away from the yes. boss. Right? So, yes, the melee viability is very poor Dog and in the shit. beta it's especially true for barbarian i do want to add a little bit here that this has a little bit of a detail to it uh -huh. the mechanics that i mentioned in the game here so yep. we talked about like you know weapons have like a doubling of the effect if they're two-handed weapons yep. the barbarian thing you know barbarian doesn't get free passives from their skills like the sorcerer does the barbarian gets an arsenal system yep. where they always Four use weapons. specific weapons for specific skills and they end up using two two-handed weapons and two one-handed weapons now if we look at the aspect configurator the one-handed weapons are treated as if like they have one slot but the two-handed is kind of like a double slot so effectively a barbarian has three more item slots worth of stats and legendary abilities true and because probably these are all multiplier effects i would bet that even though it will take longer to actually gear out a barbarian there's far more abusive multipliers and combos that you can work See, with. See, Crip again has played Blizzard games for many years. He knows that they didn't really test this stuff. Like, they didn't really actually test it. So, there's probably like some combination that's totally broken. There's a barbarian. The depth yeah. and like the absolute peak maximum performance of barbarian probably is not realized in, in this beta whatsoever as a result of that. And it does make for potentially the case that barbarians might do more damage than the other classes at high level. But have less fun. However, what I argue is that the game mechanics are so stacked against Thank you. Yes. You know, gritty yes. melee yes. combat Sucks that unless barbarian dick. does like five times the damage of a sorcerer, a sorcerer is still going to be better off just Absolutely. playing this game. Yep, see? And that kind of really sucks. That's right. It does. Another big con is hardcore. Now, a lot of people are like, hey, Crip, are you going to play hardcore? Are you going to world first? First of all, I don't know what there is to world first. What am I going to world first? Like max level or something? Is that even a challenge? The campaign? Is that even a challenge? No. You know, this isn't Jay Wilson coming out and telling us that it's the hardest game they ever made. Then they doubled it. You know, if they say that, then yeah, then that gets me really excited. And then yes. But nothing like that has been said. No. Nothing ambitious has been said about this game, in my opinion. Nothing has suggested that there is world-firstable content from what I have heard so far, and that might change in the future. But, yeah. yeah. When Diablo 3 came out, I didn't play hardcore. I played softcore to learn the game, to have an idea if it can and is worth attempting on hardcore. Then we decided that it was, then we did it. In this game... I don't know. Maybe I'll play hardcore, but I'm certainly not starting hardcore. One part of hardcore that, again, in the beta, and again, it's not that hard to fix, but it does need to be fixed. 
Diablo 4 has no grace period. When you go in a dungeon, there's no grace period zoning in. When you come out of a dungeon, there's no grace period zoning out. Not only are there regularly mobs at the entrances of both the inside and overworld of a dungeon, but it's an open world. Other players can drag dangerous monsters yep. literally on top of you will. as your hard drive struggles to load into the overworld. Now, forget your hard drive. You want to play this game on release? This, this game had issues yeah. in the first beta with extremely limited people actually trying to yep. play it. I would say that you are crazy if you're going to even attempt to play hardcore in the first week of uh, the people game. People just do it for the, content. The chance that you die to zoning or server crashes or server lag and instability are much higher than the best case you might even imagine. I think there I think your character is going to was is going to die the most unfair way possible. And you don't want to be that guy, you know? So um, I also don't know if every class has a death save. I I'm pretty sure sorcerer has a death save, but I don't know if barb does. And I don't think you can have a game that has hardcore where some classes have a death save and others don't. I think that's like super fucking cheesy. Only Sork so far? Yeah, maybe it'll change at higher levels. But, like, that is such trash. Unless they have grace periods and significant account for them, Hardcore is not really viable, in my opinion. Another aspect is the general balance of things. There are so many skills and so many aspects to them. You know what? I'll give you another example. It feels like balance is not finely tuned okay like look at this your core skills deal four percent this sucks dick you just look at it and you know that just look at it it sucks dick there it is it's right there percent increased damage when cast above 50 mana three talent points into that does half of what a legendary affix does three and you have to put talent points into this one that gives you uh, increased total mana as well. Right? To constantly cast core skills and be over 50 mana is really hard to do. It's second in line mm -hmm. after additional mana. Three yep. additional mana? Wow. Really? Core skills are generally not even the best skills. Oh, you yeah, can get 3% damage or even what is that 6% damage for one point. Yeah. This is four on one core skill. If you level a core skill and up it, one level, it gains 10% damage. Too. So in a realistic too. case, you'd have to be using like three simultaneous core skills on a regular rotation for this to maybe be worth it. And you need to watch your mana while you're doing exactly. it. It's just like... It's way too much. Yeah. I think, I think they... They didn't really... It's like the legendary, for example, like it, it makes it to where like your, your spells do 33 and all spells, not just core spells. All of your spells do 33 or, you know, it's like 25 to like 35, something like that, uh, percent more damage based off of your remaining mana. So it, there's even a slider to it. It's not like a binary thing where, oh, you don't have enough? Well, you're fucked like very finely tune the numbers on these things yeah and a lot of people have kind of realized that you know playing the first few levels of of sork and rogue and barb some of the stuff just feels so off so when you have the level this is what happened is like there's apparently like a level 20 barb and he was playing the game and he saw a sorcerer run by him and just kill everything with like one chain lightning and this guy wanted them to take the open world stuff out of the game because it upset him so much to see that. That's how bad the balance was. He said, "Take this, take this open world shit out of the game." Like I don't want. I don't, this is just upsetting me. Of complexity of the character design and the item system that I hope level I've convinced you of. When you stack that up to all the crazy possibilities we'll probably experience in the Paragon system. We have a system that has an unbelievably large amount of variables. Yes. It's a case where I don't think there is any like small group of testers that could really iron out the game. What's going to happen is this. The game's going to come out, 
and the community is going to bounce ideas off each other, work together, and some people are going to figure out these combinations. These yeah, and the beta test, and, and they did this on purpose. That's why season one isn't starting whenever the game comes out, is because they are expecting to have done a bad job testing. They are expecting, like, yeah, we probably fucked this one up. Well, let's have the players test it first, then we'll figure out the OP combos from them, and then we'll have it ready for the first season. That's what I think it is. This item Which builds, is, these character builds, that are not going to do like 50% more damage but than others. Is They're going to do like 100 times more damage than others. Yeah. And even M though there's, there's this really scaling. rich sense of, you know, the game overall, I feel like because the values are not quite finely tuned, and a bit all over the place, there is going to be like one or two builds that's going to be vastly superior for every class, and yeah. eventually everyone is going to spec into it, which is a bit of a shame. Com yeah, I think that's very disappointing. There should be, I, I would say, minimum five good builds. Complex systems require really finely tuned management of the values. And also an economy makes more builds viable because obviously like you guys ever played like in PoE again, like have you ever played Righteous Fire after Righteous Fire gets buffed and fucking uh, Pox makes a new video about it and it's got 300,000 views and you're trying to buy the same fucking fire damage, fire damage multiplier mace that 17 other fucking boomers that can only play Righteous Fire are trying to buy. And it's like the price of it is now like 15x, 20x what it's supposed to be. So then you're like, okay, you know what? Let's play something different that has a cheaper, uh, you know, a, a cheaper entry fee basically or a che cheaper like uh, way to get into it so yeah i think that absolutely happens yeah and that's one good thing that economy e economy fixes in a soft way not a hard way but a soft way Ages and i'm not yeah, really it's... seeing that in this department this another is part is bosses notably world bosses so world bosses work this way 12 players in the area basically challenge the world boss. So you're like, hey, Crypt, that seems okay. World bosses are pretty epic. They're pretty cool. A lot of people said that in the beta, it was the highlight of their gameplay. And you know what? I think there are points to agree with that. Other than the fact that barbarians really just died a lot. Uh, and I, I never suck. died on the world boss. It's super easy. Two screens away. Hydra, 3,000 damage per second. Yes. Literally two screens away from the boss. Not a no single problems. mechanic could even reach me. That's right. And uh, like in one case, I, I did the world boss while eating, while playing Battlegrounds. Yeah, that's right. 3,000 DPS. <laughs> okay. So, yes, it is extremely unfair to some classes, but to it's more unfair means. and has a tragic design flaw. Parties in Diablo 4 are four people. There's three parties. And there's no ways to extend that. So if you want to do a world boss, you at most can get three of your most powerful friends, you bring your most powerful character, and you go to the world boss area, the timer ticks down, and you have like eight random people around. If those eight random people around are like low level people who don't know how to do the fight. Nubs. Well, obviously Blizzard's going to account for that. Yeah. So unless there is a system for like maybe linking three groups or a larger group or like a raid group or a battle group, which does not exist in the beta anyway, I will say with confidence there is zero chance that world bosses are aspirational content in Diablo 4. They are. I guarantee you they're not going to be. I think world bosses are just... It's like a woolly mammoth back in the fucking in the old days. They're big, they're stupid, they're slow, and you kill them. It's a loot pinata. Yep, there it is. I think world bosses effectively force you into a looking for raid system, like in World of Warcraft, yeah. and they're not going to make the hardest system when two thirds of the challengers of a world boss are literally random. Are goof boys, so yeah. that is a terrible mechanic. 
There's been a lot of mechanics that don't work very well <laughs> in terms of the shared overworld. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to have everyone do any part of it that they want, which is kind of like a sense of freedom. But there is a lot of issues with it. This problem, I think, will remain with the game. This is one of those problems that is very heavy to balance, very heavy to move around, very, very difficult to change because it's so core to the game. So I think it will always plague Diablo 4. And I'm talking about the forced multiplayer level scaling party system. What happens is you're going to go in whatever zone it is, Act 1 is, and you're going to do it on like a level 3 character. You're going to yeah. notice that your level 3 character one shots the bears and then you're going to notice that like a level 40 character is beside you and he's actually struggling with the bears he kills them in like three hits even though he's using like stronger abilities you're going to have cases where a level 3 character is going to be beside a level 40 character and the level 3 character is going to be stronger in that zone than the level 40 character. This is so dumb because Blizzard had the same problem with uh, fucking uh, priests and uh, low-level characters in WoW. And people would level up priests that were disciplined priests to farm the Valentine's Day mount because their, their level-scaled DPS, like where everybody else is doing, like, you know, 200,000 DPS, they were doing 1.3 million DPS level scaled up, and they were also healing themselves to full health every second with their damage. So you were actually queuing in at max level in Legion. Yes, in Legion, they were doing like, yeah, it probably was more than 1 million DPS then. It's probably like 3 million DPS. And they were, they were, you were getting carried. You're level 110. You're getting carried by a level 16 priest that's a healer. All the mobs scale with your level simultaneously. It's a very complex system, and that's why I don't think it will change. I don't think it will be scrapped because it's too core to the actual game. Yeah, it's, it's stupid, but, but basically it, it's, what happens it's not is that big of a deal. the monsters just scale to your level. Yeah. And you might be thinking, hey, that's okay. Yeah. Here's one of the main consequences. I don't want to take up this video. I could probably talk 30 minutes on this subject, but the main consequence is that when you level up, you are always weaker, okay? Unless you just unlock, you like, your ultimate cool, ability, yeah. except for, like, three or four levels where you, like, unlock the next tier of abilities as you're leveling. Unless that happens, when you level up, the instant you level up, your character will always get weaker. And, and that wasn't the case in Diablo 3. Because, like, and it's not the case in PoE. Like, a lot of times, whenever you get to, like, Act 6, Act 7... Like, you've got maybe a four link going on. Maybe you got lucky with a five link. Like, you got all your stuff coming together. Uh, like, you're fucking zooming, bro. Like, you're just getting more and more powerful, building up momentum, bigger dick damage. Like, you're killing bosses. It's not a big deal. And, and like, you build that up. So, like, the growth of the game is definitely an issue. Uh, I, I think so. Like, where, where the early game stuff is a joke, and then the harder, you know, the, the higher level you get, the more annoying shit is. It does feel bad. Because one point on the skill tree at most is 10% damage. And my hands-on understanding is that the monsters gain more than 10% health. So how does a character get stronger? Well, oftentimes it doesn't. Okay, yeah. You're kind of just trying to keep up with the level scaling. It's not like a traditional, you know, Diablo 2 style game where, oh, this zone is too hard. I'll just go to a lower, lower level zone. Yeah. There is no lower level zone. You can, like, drop the difficulty of the world and probably get, like, crappy drops in experience. Yeah. Or you can just, I don't know, try to fight through it anyway. I personally hate that. I think it's a terrible system. I think that it's not good for leveling, but the problem is that there are so many advantages to having scaling at max level that I don't really see them getting rid of it. I just, I don't see it happening. It, it has its advantages because it's very inclusive. Yeah, it's... it's but I think it just, just doesn't how it feel is. good as the character. So how do you get stronger? Well, 
most of the power that you're going to gain as you play the game is going to come from items. So if you're playing through the game and you find like a legendary item, especially one with an ability you didn't have that is very good for your class and character, your, your power level is going to go up a lot oh, in yeah. some cases. But then you're going to level up and your power level is going to drop. Yep. And then it's going to drop again after another level. It's going to drop again after another level. But then you find another item, you know? So it feels very weird. I don't, like, hate it, but I don't like it. And I do think it is a very rigid base system in the game that is going to cause a lot of problems over time. It doesn't feel as good leveling up in Diablo 4 with a system like this. World of Warcraft is the same way, or it has been with previous expansions. It doesn't feel as good as it feels in PoE, or it felt in Diablo 3, or it felt in Classic WoW or Burning Crusade, whenever you were like, you went back to Westfall after you did the Dead Mines two times. Now you've got Cruel Barb. You're a rogue. Those fucking Defias Pillagers, they're dead before they even finish the cast. You don't need to worry about fireballs anymore because they're fucking dead. And yeah, the forced multiplayer thing too. Uh, it might be pretty annoying. I, don't I think mind you're going to see a lot of griefing. Again, another reason why I wouldn't really play hardcore. I think the grace period. Uh, itemization. Is very true. Itemization is a bit too simple uh, in terms of like the item level system. Yeah. I wish there was more complexities. And in some cases, there are too far of complexities. Like if if we just quickly go through the system here. It's like, okay, what do we got here? Basic skill damage, vulnerable damage, damage to crack on enemies, core skill damage. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yes, whatever. But you're going to see some things like, oh, by the way, here's another bad one for the UI. You want to see actual, actually what your stats are? You have to click on materials and stats. And with... why does it default to your plant? How many plants does I got? Where are the plants at? How? Oh, like, uh, no, nah, bro, I want to see what my numbers are always defaults to plants. Yes. And then you have to click this button. It's annoying. Which shows your gold and your active buffs. And then you have to scroll down. So things like overpower chance. You have a 3% chance to do like a crazy large hit and it's based off of your life plus 4. This overpower thing's fucking stupid by the way. I don't want to learn it. Five plus the overpowered damage bonus and on multi-hit skills it overpowered damages yep. every single hit of the skills so it's fast hitting uh, low damage no, skills really, that multi-hit is incredibly hard. good so you can stack health hard. and even though it's three percent chance you're gonna do like no damage no damage no damage but then every tenth or thirtieth hit you're gonna yep. do like 30 times damage <laughs> it's like, it's so confusing to really get a grasp for some of these mechanics, but in other cases, the itemization is like uh, item power. What is item power? Well, an item has an item power. It's kind of like an item level, Yeah. but it doesn't work like item level in Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 or Path of Exile. It's like in WoW. It seems like, and again, it's the bit, but it seems like if an item of a certain item power drops, it's like an item level, but the stats that spawn on the item are always of that item level. What does that mean? So you could have like like three int on boots if they're like level three or something like that. I don't know, it's just an example. Mm -hmm. But if you find item level 373 boots, it's always going to be a range of 11 to 18 as you can see on the item. Always. You're yeah, never going to have a stat thresholds. higher than 18 or lower than 11. It's always the top bracket of stats. You might be thinking, hey, that's pretty good. That means items are generally pretty good. Yes. Items are generally pretty good. And that is a good thing in a way, but the item level scales with your level. So if you find those perfect gloves with the perfect stats, with the perfect imprinted mod of additional Hydra, Double and then you Hydra. fast forward three levels, yeah, you need to find that exact same item again with the exact same stats, with the exact same power or imprinted power, because it's going to- You can imprint it on the new item, however, which is a little bit better, but yes, it is annoying and it is kind of obnoxious. To have marginally more stats. I feel like this game is going to be constantly finding the same items you already have as you level. Yeah. 
Uh, and that's only really solved by having an extremely fast and cheap journey to maximum level. Yeah, I think that Diablo 4 doesn't really have like a leveling experience. Most games don't have really leveling experiences anymore. Which, honestly, I also hate. I really like the idea of grinding out levels and having that time spent in the game be meaningful. I think that it will, but it's only going to matter 90 plus. It's going to be kind of like PoE, or my understanding is that this is the way that Diablo 2 works, is that like the last levels will matter, but the majority of them won't. So that is kind of a mess. And one of the hardest things to manage in ARPGs, because all these systems rarely work out in one another, is PvP. That quick little 10 bit of overpower should give you some idea about what PvP might be like. I played a rogue and I used flurry, which is a good skill to stack overpower. Now, because it hits like 10 times, I think it overpowers more often than 3%, because I think, it, I don't know exactly how it works, but it overpowers like 10% of the time. You know, there's yeah. like some lucky hit mechanics in the works and all that. I don't know exactly how it works, but basically... Which, by the way, I don't think the lucky hit percentage is on your character sheet. I didn't see it. I looked for it. Maybe, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see it. When I normally deal damage with it, it hits for like 40 damage. It's not. And when I cute. overpower it, because the overpower damage is based on my health and fortify effect, it hits for about 600, but it hits 10 times. That's a lot. So we're talking about a skill that randomly hits 15 times harder every now and then. Just as an example, I don't have faith that they're going to balance the game appropriately because of the complexity at high level, and I certainly have zero faith that it's going to work out for PvP after that with like all the Absolutely randomness not. and all. In terms of fairness, I think PvP is going to be is going to be a mess. Oh but yeah. But there is a zone with PvP uh, as part of the world, so. I don't know how incentivized or forced that will be on its players, Hopefully but not I very doubt good. it's going to be a particularly good experience for most of the players in it. Yeah. The big unknown at the end of all this is the end game loop. I think that is what really sells the game for the ages. How fun is it to play this game for many hours, for many months, for many years, and in the case of Diablo 2, for many decades? And that is not something that we know. And that is something that is really defining of, of a game, that is really defining of its success among its most hardcore players, its most enthusiastic players, at least. And that is something that we don't know. But a lot of the systems I talk about, I think, makes the end game a real wild card. I hope I've convinced you guys of my original thoughts. I think a lot of the base systems can work out really well. I think there's a lot of really cool things about Diablo 4, but I think almost all of them need some tweaking. And I think that a lot of his concerns are built around uncertainty and a lack of confidence that Blizzard will adequately balance the systems. I think that's fundamentally what his concern is. He says, this seems really complex. There's so many variables going on. There's no way you're going to be able to do it right. Overall, some of that tweaking, I don't think can be done in two and a half months. But it again, probably won't be. again, the beta that we're playing, we don't know how old that is. That might be where they were with the game six months ago. Who knows, right? So... I don't know what we're going to get on day one, but if the beta that we're playing right now is fairly current with where the development of the game is, I think it will be not all that great of a game on launch. Of course, with a lot of factors, one of which how much they're going to put into the game until that time. Thank you for watching this very long video. I hope I've convinced you that I'm pretty good at these type of games. And maybe you got some member berries off Crypt talking about Diablo for a change. Uh, I did. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the videos. Take care. Holy shit. Yep. God damn. Holy shit. That was, a, that was a video, man. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. That was a real video. Jesus. So...
I pretty much agree with everything you said. I think that some of the problems, like the UI problems, some of them are easier to solve, some of them are not. I do think the leveling problem with getting better gear and then replacing the gear, it's very awkwardly designed, but I don't see it being a massive problem. However, I do think that as a new player going into the game, it could actually be a bigger problem than I'm expecting because new players dealing with something as a new player, they're not in they didn't play Diablo 3 for 3000 hours like I did. They didn't play Path of Exile. They're not into this kind of stuff. They don't play video games professionally. So whenever they have to do it and they think it's annoying, well, they just stop playing the game entirely. So that's what my concern is with the uh, with the leveling being janky and having this like weird type of like, you know, you farm an item and then you refarm the same item and then you farm the same item again that's higher level. It's like that seems kind of bad. Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't really feel like I was getting any more powerful as I leveled up, even as a sorcerer. I feel like my power was it was really really high at like le you know levels under level 10 and then after that it was pretty much flatlined so that was my perspective on it so you know as info and delivery from one hour video yeah he plays a lot of these fucking games i mean that's just what it comes down to of course i mean this is creparian here this guy fucking was the diablo 3 god yeah i, I mean i'll uh, link you guys a video make sure to give it a like give him a sub okay this guy is uh an OG. He's a real one. Absolutely, fucking lootly, man. Yeah. It... <sighs> Last Epoch is better than Diablo 4. We're going to play Last Epoch after the Diablo 4 beta this weekend is over. I'm going to play that. I've been there for a ARPG market for ages. Yeah, exactly. How on earth did you rate it an 8.5? Oh, I think it's an 8.5. I think it's much higher. I think that he's rating it. So, like, here's the thing, right? He's rating it contextually on the expectation that the end game will be unbalanced. Which I agree with him with. I, I agree with him, but I don't really care because I just assume they'll have it fixed for the first season, which is what I really care about. Now, if the first season is unbalanced, then it will be a problem. But I, I can't I can't write a rain check for that. But he's right to be skeptical. I mean, he's played Blizzard games longer than I have. He knows what's going to happen. So, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see. Every game is trash and unbalanced. It would be 8 out of 10 if it was for free. Can you watch Necro gameplay? Uh, no, I'm just going to wait and play it whenever it comes out. I might watch it a little bit a day before the game comes out, but that's about it. To be honest, I'll play D4 just for the story, and I like the story of the Diablo universe. After that, I quit instantly. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, as long as you're getting something out of it, that seems good to me, man. Yeah, as long as you enjoy it. That's all that matters. It's beta, come on, it's not final. No, it, it's not, but I think that it's fair to say that um, I've never played, I had never played Hearthstone, but like I played, um, uh, I played World of Warcraft and there's always some unbalanced, broken bullshit. I played Diablo 3. There's always some unbalanced, broken bullshit. And it's been like that for a long time. And Overwatch, there's always some unbalanced, broken bullshit. Arsenal's bad anyway. Pay to win. I don't know. I never played it. I'm going to make you guys a video one more time. Yeah, Diablo 4 is easily tilted. Diablo 4 haters are a little too unfair. I think the reason why people are so unfair with Diablo 4 is because people want it to be good so much. People really, really, really want this game to be good. Like, And so, like, for them, a fucking a, a 5 is like a, a nine for another game because they're like I, we really really want it to be good we don't want to have any fucking bullshit we don't want to have it like a real money auction house again although it was cool whenever it came out the first time um made some money off of that but other otherwise you don't want lag error 37 any bullshit so i think that's what the thing is it's blizzard what do you expect yeah and i think also blizzard has such a bad reputation that people go into it it's like, you know, like Blizzard has like low charisma rating. So like every interaction that they have is going to be viewed negatively. Uh, like it will start negative and we'll have to improve to become neutral. That's kind of what happens. You can't even balance a handful of classes. You clearly lost it regardless of the rap. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, it, it's hard to balance shit. Uh, it's a $70 uh game uh it has to be good i don't want an mmo i want a game 
Well, MMOs are games, but I mean, we'll have to see what happens. Seasons will make or break the game. Absolutely. Yeah, seasons will, will make or break the game. That's what really matters. The game on release, I know it sounds stupid, but the game on release, I am fully expecting it to be fucking garbage. And not even fucking garbage, but like very unbalanced. I, I think it's going to be super unbalanced. And then hopefully by the time seasons come out, they will be balanced. Can you explain what seasons is? It's like a full reset of the game with like a few different new uh, affixes and like changes to the end game. So it makes the game different. That That's basically what it is. I bother balancing when players do a job for you in a couple months. Well, yeah, that's fine. Like, it's fine. I, I like finding the little OP combinations and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. So we'll have to see what happens. I mean, I'm excited for the game. Definitely, I think all the points he brings up are completely valid. Um, the the UI issues, why does it open up your plants tab first? Luckily, a lot of the concerns that he said with the game, and, and this is what he said at the beginning of the, of the video, is that it can be a 9 or an 8 out of 10 game in a year. And I think that with a live service game like this, the truth is that PoE was not a 10 out of 10 out the gate. Diablo 3 was not a 10 out of 10 out the gate. Uh, Last Epoch, my understanding, I have not played the game, was not a 10 out of 10.